Namaste, my friends. I get quite a few comments about my husband wanting to marry me only for my Finnish passport and then being able to live in Finland in the future. Another common question about our living situation is that why in God's name would a Finnish girl from a rich country like Finland ever want to live in India? I thought that it's really important to talk about a topic like this concerning both of our native countries and what are the considerations that we went through in deciding where we want to live and by that also offer some advice for other international couples what to think about when they are deciding what is the best country for them to live in. Vinod and I are both quite privileged in the sense that It is really an equal choice for us because we are able to have a really good life in either one of our native countries. Of course, there is a lot of poverty in India when compared to Finland and life here can be really difficult if you're a poor person. Even though I wouldn't call myself rich, I would definitely acknowledge that Vinod and I belong to the middle and upper middle class in India. And our reality is very different from that of the majority of Indian people. There are so many things that I love about India and also, of course, things that I love about my country and preferences that Vinod would have about Finland too. But those weren't really our consideration when we were thinking where we want to live. Our factors were mostly based on the fact which country would be able to provide us with a better standard of living. So the first thing that we thought about was our careers and the immovable assets that we have. I myself am not a very career ambitious, career oriented person, not at all. I actually quit university before graduating when I was about 25 or so. And after that, I was just like gathering work experience in different kinds of fields, trying to find the thing that I would enjoy enough to do for the rest of my life. So actually, when I met Vinod, uh, I had found a nice enough career that I thought that I would be doing, but I was at the very starting point with that. It wasn't necessarily the thing that was my dream and that I wanted to do forever, but it was decent enough. But then when It came to the question which country I would want to live in. Actually, moving to India did provide me with some much more interesting opportunities and the option of reaching towards my dream, which wasn't really a realistic option when I was still living in Finland and completely had to make a living for myself. I also had no property in Finland, so I wasn't tied to anything that I owned. I was living on rent, so it was just easy to let go of my apartment and move my furniture and other belongings like that to my mother's house. But then again, the opposite was true for Vinod. He had his good master's degree and he had a very long-standing career that he had been doing for, I think, over 10 years. I felt like his job was more valuable valuable than mine at that point. For him to move to Finland where he necessarily would not be able to find a job very quickly just was not an option because he would probably go crazy with that. I on the other hand am not going crazy. <laughs> the thing is that of course in Finland he would probably be eventually able to create a good career and have a very very high paying job but the fact is that to give up a career that he had been building for such a long time here in India would mean that he would have to give that up and start all over again in Finland. He might have to re-educate himself uh, and he definitely would have to start at a lower position before being able to proceed to more senior positions. So we, or maybe I, decided that his career was more important and also as a Haryan Vijat, belonging to a community that is well known for its farming and agricultural tendencies, he has a lot of immovable assets here in India. 
he has ancestral land that he is tied to, as any judge can really understand, and he also owns a lot of other property, especially like other plots and so on. So it just made more sense to lean to India with this point. And in the end, this choice did really prove out to be the best one for us, because here in India, I have actually been able to start a new career that was my dream and that I really have a passion for. Hello, YouTube and my vlogging audience. <laughs> and this will also enable me to have a better, much more fun career in the future, which I can actually move to any country if we ever do decide to leave India. And one of the important factors for me when it comes to the job situation is that in India I can afford to be able to stay as a stay-at-home mom, which right now is a very current topic for us. It was always my dream to be able to be a mom who would spend a lot of time with her children and be away from home as less as possible. So it's really good that I have this option here in India, whereas in Finland, I'm pretty sure that I would have never had the possibility to be a stay-at-home mom. Which brings me to the point which was probably even more important for us than the career considerations, which is the financial and standard of living factor. If we only look at the absolute numbers, Definitely the income in Finland is higher than it is in India. This is four years back when I still had my career in Finland and that wasn't even a very high paying job in Finnish terms. I was making a lot more money than Vinod was making at that point in his career. I think even to this date it is still more money than he is making. But the consideration that we have to really make at this point is the purchase power that we have with that money, aka what we're able to afford to buy with that and the price of things, which really benefits India in our considerations. If we think about our wages this day, we would pretty much maybe be at the same level with that. But then let's focus on the expenses with that money. When I was still living in the capital of Finland, Helsinki, half of my income went to housing expenses. Then into that we're adding the expensive food, transportation that I really need to even be able to reach work, uh, phone bills and whatever other necessary expenses there might be every month. So we're left with a really, really small slice of my wage. So it doesn't really leave me with many possibilities for shopping or like luxuries such as traveling or savings. Whereas in India, if we look at the similar kind of pay, our total expenses are somewhere down here. So we are left with a lot of money to spend on these uh, non-essential purchases and also we're able to save a lot more. Of course the situation will slightly change once the baby arrives. Hopefully it's not a big eater like me and a picky one. <laughs> but it is still a consider considerable amount of money that we get to spend here rather than in Finland. And we also did this kind of calculation that for us to be able to have the same kind of lifestyle in Finland that we currently have here in India, our combined income would have to be, I think, around 10,000 euros, which would be almost 10 lakh rupees per month. And that is just crazy and not many <laughs> Finnish people are able to do that. So in India, I don't really have to worry about money at all, but I still like to use economical thinking and compare the prices of things and not splurge on something that is just completely unnecessary. We don't do a lot of shopping and when we use money, we really consider it. We uh, really do budgeting and follow our, all our expenses to keep a tab on our rational economical thinking and spending. 
So the point here is that you can really have a nice life anywhere in the world if you have money and in India you really get worth for the buck, so to say. One more thing that I really have to point out at this stage is that when there are a lot of us foreigners coming to India and we talk about like, oh, but it's not a poor life in India. What are you talking about? You have like such nice middle class houses and fancy apartment buildings, such uh, great shopping possibilities and all these fancy services here that we can get and we can have like a really, really good life here. Like, what are you talking about? We are really talking from a privileged position because the money that we have from, for example, our European countries is able to buy us more than if we had our money all our life long from India. So when I see people talking about like, oh, oh yes, like it is India that gave us the uh, opportunity to have this kind of like really good luxurious life. Sure, there's like little truth in that, but mostly it is our privileged position because this certainly is not the case for most Indian people. For us, the most important things to consider were our careers and assets and then the standard of living that we are able to have. But we did have a couple of other considerations too, even though they weren't quite as important. Of course, we considered our families and the community. I come from a quite dysfunctional family and I didn't have those like very kind of uh, close connections with my family members. So at that point, uh, when we were making this decision, it felt easier for me to leave my family behind and move to this faraway country. But I have to say that this situation has changed a little bit in the years, uh, because these days it is increasingly hard to spend such a long time away from my family every year, especially now that I'm pregnant, I'm really, really missing my mom all time. And actually this distance between us has really been able to improve our relations uh, with my mom and sister and my dad when he was still living. Uh, so now we are in close contact uh, almost every day. I do also have to say that my mom has probably been my biggest supporter in my decision to move to India. She is really excited about my life with Vinod and like probably the most eager person ever to visit India and after her retirement to be able to start spending several months a year here in India with us. But I didn't really need to consider uh, this decision based on, oh, I have to take care of my mom or anything because she's still uh, in work life, she is in pretty good health and is very active and has all these interests in her life and at least my sister lives close to her. And anyways, the family values between Finland and India are very different because in India the like, whole big family unit is one of the most important uh, factors in a person's life. I think mommy and papa would have been completely devastated had I moved Vinod to Finland with me, even though Vinod has always been a very independent person. They haven't probably in two decades had any kind of like joint family setting and Vinod isn't financially supporting his family. So uh, mommy and papa aren't dependent on us, but they are also very independent people. But I think that the idea for them that we would live in a different country is just like completely incompre incomprehensible. It's just like it would never cross their wild imagination even because like what is that? That's not like that doesn't exist. And I think that uh, for me this was a little bit more important factor than uh, it was for Vinod. Uh, I did not want to devastate mommy and papa uh, that way. Uh, my mother was more accommodating in this way and supporting me in the decision and yeah at least for the first decade or so in our relationship I just didn't want to take Vinod, uh, mommy and papa's precious only son away from 
uh, India and severe the ties that he has with the family and all the land and all that, if you know what I mean. Then, of course, uh, another factor was just our personal preferences, which m maybe was the least important one. This, this was like pretty much a tie between us. We both have a very open mind and curiosity towards each other's cultures and countries. Vinod has always been very intrigued with Scandinavian countries and India has been like a fairy tale land to me ever since I was a small kid. So basically we are both very willing to live in each other's countries at any given point in time. It's just that I think now in the early years of our relationship I was the one who had more determination and was very set on in living in India because I also think that uh, now that we're still young and not quite yet have a family it was easier for us to have all these like adventures in India and build our life and house our family together here than it would have been in Finland but maybe at some point in the future not very uh, not in the very near future, but let's say maybe 10 years from now, we would maybe consider moving to Finland at least part-time, but that is a completely whole different story in the far future. So we'll see then, but these were definitely the most considerations for us at this point of time. And I think that in the past four years that we have shared in India, these have proven out to be really accurate and have made our life much better. And probably this also means that our life in the future will be much easier and better too. This was just to give you more like a general overview on the reasons why we decided to stay in India rather than move to Finland. I will definitely be making more specific vlogs about these topics, especially the cost of living in India versus Finland and our finances in the future, because I think that these are really interesting and helpful topics for all people. So I'll definitely be filming those in the coming weeks and sharing those with you as soon as possible. I hope you enjoyed this vlog and if you have any questions about the topics please do put them in the comments box because then I will also be able to use those in the vlogs that I am planning right now. Thank you so much for watching this vlog and I really hope to see you guys soon again. Mwah.